Hey, hey, what's going on? We're going to be going over uh, your guys' first little assignment with Simple Harmonic Motion. It's the first time you guys have kind of dealt with a uh, horizontal spring oscillator. Okay, so pretty much for this class, anytime we're doing stuff, like they might conceptually ask you something different, but anytime we're dealing with a uh, oscillator like this, it's going to be frictionless. So really the only force that matters when you're going back and forth is this force of the spring pulling on the uh, block or whatever object is sitting going back and forth. All right. So let's just kind of read through this thing real quick. Try to catch any bits that we have. Um, diagram to the right shows a block attached to a hookian spring. That's kind of a weird term. All hookian means is that it follows Hooke's law. All right. And if you don't remember Hooke's Law, uh, let's go... Hooke's Law is this law down here. So if you think on the equation sheet, you know, zoom in a little bit down here, the force of a spring is equal to K. K is the spring constant times how far it's been stretched. So anything that's Hookean basically means uh, the force and the amount it's been stretched are proportional to each other. So if you double the amount it's been stretched, you're going to also double the amount of force acting on it. All right. So that's what Hookean means. Uh, on a frictionless surface, so that's good. No friction. Block experiences no net force when it's at position B. So that's what we call if there's no net force at position B. That's what we call its equilibrium position. Okay, that's where the block would just want to be if there was nothing acting on it. Uh, when the block is to the left of the spring, the spring pushes it back to the right. Common sense. And then when the block is to the right, when it's at position C, the spring is pulling it back to the left. Okay. Uh, the block is pulled to the left from point B to A. So we pull it back from B to A and then let it go. Okay, the block then oscillates back and forth uh, between A and C consider point B to be zero position and then to the right is positive so anything going from B to C or over here is in the positive position and then anything on this side to the left is in the negative position so we want to graph this stuff so the very first thing that we're doing is the force. So with force, um, it's going to look like, okay, it's going back and forth between A and C. And like we talked about uh, at B, that's what we call the equilibrium position. So there is zero net force right there. So if we start, if we look right here, this force graph starts at point B, so we know there is zero net force. I'm actually going to draw a dot right there. And I'm just going to put all the dots to start, because this is a qualitative graph. So we're going to put all the points to start, and then uh, just draw in the graph from there. So the next one is at point C. So if it's at point C, that's this bottom one down here. If the block's been stretched out all the way to point C, uh, the force of the springs pulling it to the left and since it's pulling it to the left think about the direction that that leftward force is pointing anything going to the left is in the negative direction so at point C we have a negative force okay now we're back to point B at point B remember there's zero net force and so it's at zero and at point A we have this middle one right here. At point A, it's all the way to the left. The spring force, called the restoring force, is trying to push it back to the equilibrium position. So it's at point B. So it's pushing to the right. Remember, anything going to the right is a positive. So positive. So you can kind of see the trend happening. B is zero. At part C, it's pushing to the left, so negative, and then it just kind of goes back and forth in this pattern right here. Okay. And now that we have all these dots drawn, we need to connect them with a graph. And so it's 
really common for people wanting to just do these straight line things like that. That's actually not how this ends up going because there's a little bit of change and it's slowing down and stuff like that. What it ends up looking like is almost like a uh, a like a trig function, right? So let me connect everything just like that. Okay, so that's what our force graph ends up looking like. Um, when we do the acceleration graph, what's cool is acceleration. Think about how do we like know about the relationships between force and acceleration? Well, Newton's second law says that the net force is proportional to whatever the acceleration is. So whatever the net force is doing, the acceleration is going to do the exact same thing, right? So these graphs are actually going to look really similar. The amplitude, like how high the graph is, or the number for it might be different, but the shape, the proportionality is going to be all the exact same. So for the acceleration graph, it's going to look the exact same as the force graph. And once I have all those dots put in, I just need to draw uh, my graph through. Okay. Now we move on to what would the position graph look like? And for the position graph, uh, it's just take literally where its position is. So remember at position B, we read up above that, where is it? Uh, oh, right here, this last sentence. Consider point B to be zero position and to the right of B positive, to the left of B negative. So when it's at point B, let me do a different color for this one. Uh, let's go green. When it's at point B, uh, it's at zero position. So we're gonna start it at zero. Now, when it goes to point C, Remember, it said anything to the right of C, or anything to the right of B is negative, or Jesus. Anything to the right of B is positive for position. So for position, when it's at C, it's actually a positive position. When it's back at B, it's a zero position. When it's at A, anything to the left of point B is negative. So when it's at A, it's a negative position. And then you're just going to fill in the dots following that same pattern. All right, so we have our position graph now. Now we need a velocity graph. So we'll do one more. Let me pick a different color. Let's go purple. Why the heck not? Okay, when it is at velocity. So what's crazy about velocity, <clears throat> when it's going through point B, it's actually going to be moving the fastest. If we think about velocity, this thing's stretching. Uh, in the video you guys watched in Ed Puzzle, the at points A and C, it's actually at rest, right? When it's changing direction is when the block has to stop before it can change direction, right? So at points A and C, the velocity is actually zero. At point B, it's had that force acting on it the whole time. It's been accelerating. For the longest it's going to accelerate, so at point B, it's actually going to have a maximum velocity. Uh, so it's either going to be moving to the right as fast as it can go or to the left as fast as it can go. Okay, so when we started this thing, it said uh, the block is pulled to the left from point B to point A. So we pull it to point A and we let it go. Okay, so that means it was at A like right here, and we let it go so that it was moving to the right with some velocity as it goes through B, right? So it's going from A to B. Well, from A to B, it's moving to the right, so it starts with a big positive velocity, okay? <clears throat> Remember we said A and C are the endpoints, so we're gonna have a zero velocity, so at point C, it's zero velocity. Then it starts moving back to the left. Right, and back to the left, as it's going through B, it's moving left, so with a negative velocity, so it's got a maximum negative velocity. And then at A, it's at zero, 
And then from A to B, it's moving to the right, so it's got a big positive velocity. And then zero, and you kind of see the pattern happening again. Okay, and so we have, now we just fill in all of our, okay. Now what's kind of cool is some of your, the calculus students might be seeing uh, a little bit of a pattern here. When you think about how we do all of our uh, kinematic graphs, right? You start with position, the slope, or the derivative of that gives you the velocity, right? Well, if you look at the position graph, this graph looks pretty darn similar to a sine curve, right? So we got a sine graph. What's the velocity graph look like? Okay. Looks exactly like a cosine graph. So if you have a position function, you can take the slope or the derivative of this position graph to get the velocity, right? And then the derivative of the velocity graph would be acceleration. Well, if we look at the acceleration graph, this goes from sine for position, cosine for velocity, and then negative sine as the derivative of the velocity graph. So everything's still kind of working hand in hand. Remember, you can use calculus on the exam. You never have to, right? It's definitely not a requirement, but it's allowed if you have those tools in your toolbox. All right, so uh, if you have any questions, send me an email text, whatever. We can talk about this on the WebEx meeting, and I will see you guys later.